Gomez, kill him with kindness. It's Dan, Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves an awesome time. Uh, I wanted to do something uh, a little bit on how we give and take energy. Uh, This affects not only how we treat our friends, our relationships, but also how other people treat us. Our energy is kind of a prized possession. It's definitely something that's important. When our energy gets low, we start to get grumpy, start to get frustrated, start to maybe not behave. Our patience level may start to drop. We may find ourselves getting tired. It might affect our health, right? A lot of things start to happen when our energy levels fall. Energy levels can fall just from the standard nuances of work. You know, you have a tough day at work, got a lot of people who are maybe being grumpy with you, right? And we're going to cover the four main ways that energy transfers, grumpy being kind of one of them. Uh, but these kinds of situations will wear you out. And you'll come home just exhausted and you'll fall back. Ah, you'll fall back in your chair and you won't have any energy to do anything. Or maybe your kid wants to go out and play. Hey, can we go play catch, dad? No, God, I'm beat, right? So we really need to be mindful of energy, of what people are taking from us or borrowing from us and what we're doing to others. Are we taking energy from others or are we giving energy to others. It happens both directions. And it's very, like I said, super important that we try to manage this. If we're taking energy from other people, we need to notice this. We need to pay attention. We need to try to make a difference because if you're someone that inherently takes energy from other people, you're creating a situation where eventually these uh, these people will stop giving you energy. They'll stop. It becomes tiresome. It becomes an effort. You become a liability, if you will. Now, if you're somebody that is constantly having energy taken from you, well, the same kind of starts to be said. It might be a friend and it just might, you might find yourself exhausted after hanging out with this friend for any length of time. And then you start to feel guilty for not wanting to hang out with them. Well, here's why You don't want to hang out with them. So that's what I'm going to explain here. And then, of course, the converse is true. You can give people energy kind of by doing the opposite of these four things. Four things. I believe this came from Celestine Prophecy initially, uh, James Redfield book, an amazing book. I'm pretty sure I have it linked in one of my little Amazon links below. Um, Celestine Prophecy was amazing, and I really am very, very fond of uh, James Redfield. The Tenth Insight was really good, and then he did a a Shambhala uh, book that was phenomenal. Again, love him. He's been a huge key player in my whole evolution. And this specific topic, in uh, without a doubt, has played an enormous role. So four ways that we take energy is kind of how he explains it. But four ways energy is transferred amongst people. There's kind of almost personality types, if you will. There's the intimidator, interrogator, aloof, and poor me. I, I didn't really count those well, but there's four of them, right? So let's start with the intimidator. What is an intimidator? To make timid, to fill with fear, uh, to uh, overcome or cow uh, as through the uh, force of personality or by superior display of wealth, talent, etc. Or to force into or deter from some action by inducing fear. Intimidators tend to be your more violent type people in society. They tend to be your bullies. They tend to be um, people that basically have the upper hand. I've certainly seen women that have fallen into this in relationships that are um, very uh, very demanding, very in control, basically hold all the cards. They have the goods, and the guy will do whatever they say. And in fact, when I was actually in radio, one of the guys I worked with actually, and this is really sad, his wife was a, um, a bodybuilder, and he literally, she beat him up one, beat him him up one night his story to us and he finally told me confidentially and this has been years and no one knows who the heck i'm talking about but he told everybody he got in a car crash and everyone believed him because that's what it looked like she beat the living snot 
out of this guy. He was a smaller guy, a really nice guy, had an amazing voice, by the way, and just a really, really good DJ on the on the classic rock station I was working at. And I guess she used to be a bodybuilder and was just very powerful woman and just beat the snot out of him. So again, that's kind of the concept of an intimidator. And certainly there's been abusive situations, but these people take your energy by force or by the threat of force, by that, you know, they'll jump at you, blah, 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 right? And you are fearful and will do whatever they ask. So those kinds of personalities, and if you're sort of aggressive like that with other people, you're taking their energy. Not very cool. So definitely one of the ways, kind of one of the easier ones to pinpoint, right? Because people that are intimidators tend to be kind of more aggressive, tend to kind of be, I don't want to say jerks, but jerks. Uh, so again, they are forcing the energy from you and generally not healthy relationships to be involved with if you're involved with an intimidator. What's another example of a, well, what's another kind of energy thievery, if you will? There's the interrogator. The interrogator is someone that asks questions of a person. They sometimes are just seeking answers or information that a person has questioned or it considers it personal or some sort of secret. Uh, they will examine by question. That's really where it starts to come into the energy problem. So, example, uh, your so-and-so's been out. They're kind of coming home late. Maybe they've been drinking a little. Said they were hanging with friends. And you start grilling them. You start doing the 20 questions. Where were you? Who were you with? Why were you so late? Why didn't you call me? Why didn't you text back? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? And you just sub beat them into submission with your endless series of questions to the point where they eventually just throw up their hands and they're like, ah, whatever. I don't care anymore. Whatever you want, that's what happened because I don't want to have this argument. I don't want to fight. You are exhausting me with all of this questioning. Are you somebody that questions everything because you're not sure what's going on in the relationship? Because you're unsure, because you're un, um, there, there's a lack of healthy in your own self-esteem to where maybe you're afraid they're going to cheat on you. Maybe you're afraid that whatever. So you question them incessantly. This is a form of energy thievery. And trust me, if you're one of these people that is so questioning, you're still adorable. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not giving any negative thoughts about you as a person. What I'm talking about, these are some of these Unsecure, insecure behaviors that we oftentimes will find. And here's one of the ways they will manifest themselves sometimes. And a lot of these, we can, you know, these could have been issues from our past, whatever the case is. You might have an excuse for being like this. What I'm saying is when you're an interrogator and you're questioning the crud out of whoever you're questioning, could be your best friend, could be your SP, you know, could be your parents, could be your child, whatever. When you constantly, incessantly, question them about everything, a few things will start to happen. Either one, they'll bail on you just because it's so exhausting being around you. Two, they start to lie to you because it becomes so much easier than dealing with the litany of questions. Uh, they just straight up may, I don't know, they might try to turn it back around on you, which doesn't generally go over well for people that try to take energy from others. But again, things to keep in mind. Are you constantly questioning the crud out of everything that happens Something to think about because truly you are asking for energy. You're asking for reaffirming. You're, you're asking them to affirm everything for you, especially when it's like, well, do you love me? Are you sure you love me? Well, I don't know. You didn't really text me back. It took you like an hour before you texted me back. Are you sure you actually care? That's the same kind of thing. You're asking for energy. They need to feed you their energy to make you feel good so everything's okay. And that's an imbalance. That's not healthy. And it doesn't work long term. And maybe in some cases when it's an X scenario and we get really, really close, I hear these kinds of stories frequently, get really, really close and then something happens and they start either questioning, they start falling back on their old patterns, right? They start questioning, they start asking things, they start getting insecure. And this creates more of a distancing so then all of a sudden, everything's really good, and then they push away because, da, ah, now it just feels weird to be around you. It's not comfortable. So, interrogators, questioning the crud out of people, not good. So, if that's happening, if that's a pattern, 
We can certainly look at why it's happening, but ultimately try to stop doing it. And that's the better way to go about it. If you're in a relationship where this is happening to you, understand also that's not healthy. You can try to have the discussion with them. Maybe that'll be good. But if you're starting to have kind of uneasy feelings, starting to wonder why you're wanting to walk, maybe you're not interested anymore. These kinds of things can be part of that. So things to keep in mind. Another one, and this one's a little, ah, a little weirder. I don't run into this as much, but it comes once in a while. It's the person that's aloof. And an aloof person is someone that is removed or distant, either physically or emotionally. Uh, they can be kind of unfriendly. Um, a lot of times, it's someone that maybe is ultra intellectual and might hold you at, at arm's length because you're so inferior to them. But it's that sort of detached, emotionally detached. They don't really, they're not really vested. They don't really, they, and they basically force you to constantly feed them energy because they're so wonderful. And so they sort of almost put themselves up on a pedestal and expect you to treat them as such. So, so long as they're up on that pedestal, everything's great. The second you try to remove them from that, oh, they get a little bit grumpy. Not so, not, not so good. So if you're one of those people where you've maybe got this intellectual superiority over others, you might very well come across as aloof or very well might actually be aloof to other people. And it's, again, a way of taking energy from others or Sometimes it's a way we have our energy taken from us. Maybe the person you're interested in is just brutally intelligent, or maybe your boss is super intelligent and is constantly at this weird, like, you, I am better than you, and therefore you will give me respect. And it's that kind of energy giving that tends to make us feel awkward and uncomfortable. And if you're in one of those situations with a boss, for example... Eh, not a bad idea to consider maybe looking at getting a different job. Because trust me, you've got a better job at finding another job and a new boss than you do at getting your boss to change or leave. Generally doesn't happen. You're going to fight your boss, you're going to lose the battle, and probably cost yourself a good job. So it's either suck it up and deal with it, or consider moving on to greener pastures or other pastures just in general. All right, and trying to speed this up, because I've been lagging on this. I don't know what the hell happened. The most important, and this is the reason I truly did this show, is the poor me. The poor me is where so many people fall. This is a really strong amount of uh, issues strike from the poor me. And the poor me is the person that constantly talks about how horrible their life is, how frustrating things are, how... This is just not going well. This didn't go well. And then I had this problem. And ultimately what they want is they want you to come in and say, that is awesome. They, they want you to come in and basically say, oh, everything's okay. You'll be fine. Everything will work out okay. No matter what, I got you. I got your back. And all they want is they just want someone to kind of feed them energy because they don't feel good because they're unhappy. A lot of us have fallen into this trap, especially when we get bummed, when we get depressed, when we get frustrated. And many of us don't realize that when we get like this, especially if we're trying to talk to our SP, our specific person, right? We're trying to talk to them, but we're in this very poor me kind of attitude right now. Oh, it didn't go well. Work wasn't very good today. And so-and-so was kind of being grumpy. I don't know. It was just frustrating. And you're expecting your SP to basically say, oh, sweetie, everything's okay. I love you. It's okay. Now, I understand from a distance, you're like, well, but I'm just wanting him to love me. I understand. But you're doing it through a means of saying, poor me, feel bad for me, give me energy. That's not the healthy way to do it. And again, if this is a pattern that continues to reoccur, you will find people will start to push you away because it's tiring. It's exhausting. We only have so much energy we can expose a day. We're like batteries, and we certainly recharge at night. We recharge when we meditate. We recharge when we do things that are fun, that we enjoy. But we also expend energy. And if someone's taking an abnormal amount and not really giving you a chance to kind of recharge, you start to deplete. And that starts to affect your health. That starts to affect your well-being. It starts to affect your patience. And it makes a relationship very challenging. So are you one of these people that are 
intimidating others? Are you interrogating others? Are you questioning the crud out of them? Are you aloof? Are you so intelligent that you expect everyone to cow down to you, to, to bend down to your whims, bow down to you? Maybe that's a better way to put it. Either way, are you expecting this sort of inferior behavior to you? You're kind of being aloof. Are you someone that's very poor me? Do you constantly have some sort of issue that you're complaining about that you want other people to make you feel better for? If we can notice these patterns in ourselves, we can actually make a huge difference in our lives. If we don't notice these patterns, then we're constantly going to walk around and wonder why bad things keep happening to us, why people keep pushing us away, why, why our specific person keeps breaking up with us. We get back together and then we break up. We get back together and then we break up. I'll bet you money... If you start looking and paying attention to the behaviors that are happening, if you're in a yo-yo cycle in your life, it probably has a lot to do with the fact that there's an energy imbalance. You're either taking energy or you're not giving enough back. Now, again, we can give energy in much the same way by being kind to someone, by saying, oh, God, hey, sweetie, how you doing? You're, I love what you've done with your hair. It's been great. You are so wonderful. I just, I can't, but you, whatever, you know, like, Everything looks good. Oh, wow, that must have been a tough day. Life's great. I'm, I'm glad you were able to get through that. These moments do give energy. And when you do it just for fun and they take it just for good and it's good and they don't keep demanding it, well, that's a healthy exchange. And they'll probably say something nice back to you. And life is great. You give, they give, we take, they take. That's good. That's an equal behavior. It's when it's often and it's not necessarily reciprocated back, meaning we constantly are in the poor me cycle, and they're constantly having to feed us energy. This happens a lot with best friends, not just your specific person, but maybe you're one of your best friends, and you always want to get together with them to complain about something. Well, they're just listening to me. Mm. Well, I'm telling you, that's fine. They might very well be, but they're also giving you energy. And if that continues to happen, and it's not equal, this friend of yours will distance themselves from you. So again, we've felt friends like this before too. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to distance yourself from someone that is taking your energy. It's not healthy. You need to stand up for yourself. Stand up for your own energy. Stand up for who you are. Allow that. You can talk to them about it. It might not help. But sometimes you just need to separate. You need to cut that tie. You need to let it go. And when you do that, you will find the weight has been lifted. You will find your energy levels increase. You will find you start getting healthy again. You will find things start to improve in your life because your general energy is increasing and you're being happier more often. You're doing things you enjoy doing. You're not being dragged down by this anchor. Things to keep about, things to keep in mind about how we give and take energy. It's a really important thing that we need to learn to have a healthy relationship. And this kind of ties in with the show I did yesterday. It's a little more of a uh, some of the fundamentals behind that. And hopefully this makes a difference for all you guys. Going out with a great Tim McGraw song. It's called Humble and Kind. Dan Radio style. Hold the door, say please, say thank you. Don't stay- 